So bringing our last couple to the stage, that's Jan and David. So she is a prevention specialist and he's a nurse. And a fun fact about them is that David is a brother from another mother, meaning he's part of the Masenda and Nzeramasaka family, which is part of our family from Zimbabwe. And so that makes Jan our brother, which means sister-in-law. Oh, nice. So um, their song is, is by James Taylor and How Sweet It Is. Well, I'm going to start us off without the mic because, and David needs it because he's a low talker. You ever watch Seinfeld? She speaks professionally. We actually, uh, we met when we were both in, in our 40s and uh, I had been married and divorced and uh, he hadn't been married. Uh, and we were going to the same church. That's kind of where we, as we didn't meet, I like saw him from afar and I thought, she shows up in the Sunday school class, I've been hoping to teach you for singles. <laughs> yes. I thought, well, okay, I'm going to go to the singles class, you know. Uh, you know the singles class. You, you, you know about the singles class. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to go. Yeah, so I go to singles class because I'd kind of been scoping him out and I found out his name and stuff like that. And I thought, I'm kind of to know this guy. So I'm going to go to this singles class. So I get in there and uh, and I'm wearing my little silk, teal, silk shirt. <laughs> I'm filling out my information on, you know, that you always get when you first start Sunday school. You know, they want to know everything about you and what. And I, and I have no pen. I'm going to fill it out, but I have no pen. And I go, oh, excuse me, to, to him. <laughs> Could you give me a pen? She toss it over. He, yeah, I said, just toss it over. I'm kind of a jock, so I figured I'm going to catch it, right? <laughs> and so he throws it. It goes directly into the cup of coffee in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> And that's exactly what I did. He went, oh, and I thought, yeah, that's sweet. <laughs> he's, he's, all, he's all abashed. It was. I had three sisters. I know how they would have killed me. <laughs> I take an attention. I take an attention for all, so, yeah. And I mentioned this to a guy that I, years before, I met a roommate with in college. He said, well, you, you noticed her four or five years ago. I did. Um, she came to group to work for Wycliffe Bible Translators as a teacher. They stay out the field 15, 20 years. Um, they raise the kids. They need teachers. Give them talent in a certain area. Um, so she spent four years in group teaching these kids. Before she left, she spoke at our church. And I had told this roommate, Betty, uh, that, you know, how impressed I was by this late spoke church. She said, that's the same gal. <laughs> <laughs> so I missed, but go ahead. <laughs> so we circled each other a little more, and a little while later, we both went separately. Um, yeah. We signed up for a trip to our mom, our church, who's working with the college. Yeah, so I'm thinking, well, now here's my chance. We're both going to Guatemala. <laughs> We're going to be there a whole week. We're going to get to know each other, and that's going to be so cool. And it kind of happened that way. Although, there were, you know, lots of people on this trip, like 20, 25 people on this trip. But I got to kind of get to know him a little bit better. And I thought just his signing up to go to Guatemala with how I felt about missions, that was a real plus. So, um, we just, you know, we kind of talked a little bit, and then when we came back, we started dating. Uh, we, we went out, oh, wow. Yeah, the first, first day, we went out to eat, and I immediately, this is someone I could be very comfortable with for a long period of time. She was easy to walk with. Uh, we had several values and things. Um, yeah, so from the very first day, it's like, I, I want to continue this. Yeah. Well, and I thought, well, this is a nice guy, and he, and he was really, you know, and he was talkative, and he was a kid, and I thought, you know, this is, this is going to be good. And then we date, you know, several more times, like, and I'm, I'm in my 40s, you know, and I am, like, kind of a feminist. And so I'm thinking, I don't 
know that this guy is the bad guy. He is really nice. I didn't put the bill. <laughs> but I, you know, I just started asking questions and and you know, I said, well, you know, what do you do? And he said, well, I work for my dad. And I thought, he doesn't have a real job. <laughs> and uh, I thought, maybe not. Maybe, maybe this is not the right guy. Well, I started feeling this. I was going, I recognized this was coming off. And by this time, I was interested, and I knew I was going to have to do something with this, which is going to And the only thing I could come up with is I had to wire it. I had to take a chance and just spill the beans and say what I thought. And I knew it was either going to kill the relationship or it was going to give me a chance to get her home more and more. So I basically wrote her a letter that said, This is who I see you as. Because I see you this way, I like you, I'm interested, and I'm interested more just dating much. Okay, this is the real letter. Listen to this. Now, <laughs> pretend that you're trying to back, oh, kind of back out and ease, you know, ease out the back of the words, you know, get away from me. And this is my hail And this is what he writes to me. He says, a common trait of people I love is their capacity to be touched by those around them. Their empathy is natural, uninhibited, even unavoidable. They do not seek to suppress it. They respond in spontaneous and surprising acts of compassion and consistent, persistent acts of concern for others. And their expressions of themselves are unique and endearing. It's your personal expression of such things and your simple clarity of them that I find most interesting, intriguing, endearing, and frightening, and exciting. <laughs> I want you to know that I appreciate you for that. You are an easy person for me to love, Jan Tipton. I want to thank you for bringing that to me, and I want you to know how much I appreciate that part of yourself you choose to share with me. From my heart, David. Aww. 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 Well, and you know, I, it, it was, um, I, I didn't know what to think about a letter like I had first, I just meant, Silence. Put it on the floor. A week of silence. A week of silence. And then I would pick it up like once or twice a day and read it again because it's pretty heavy, you know. And I wasn't, I just didn't, I thought, compassionate? I, oh, I wish I was compassionate. <laughs> I'm really not. Um, and then he says that thing about empathy, and I'm like, oh, I wish I was empathetic. But I'm really not. And he's telling me everything that I wish that I was. But I really didn't think I was. Sometimes we don't know ourselves as well as the people around us. Oh. And sometimes you have to have to work it out. Yeah, but also my coworkers call me the evil missionary. <laughs> 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 Oh no, this letter is throwing me for a loop. I've got to talk to Joe. And Joe was my coworker. And um, she and I uh, worked together every day. And two or three times a week, sometimes we would go out and go eat and talk about the world, you know, and what we would do with the world if they would just let us be the queen of the world. <laughs> and so we go to the Rainbow Cafe because Joe Cafe is a chain smoker. <laughs> and it's a one place in Shawnee. Now this is in the 90s. You could still smoke in some restaurants. And so and it was not a restaurant, it was a cafe. It's kind of fine. But anyway, I mean, she's filled with smoke, and you just kind of wait. But anyway, Joe's sitting there, and she's got her cigarette, and I let her read the letter. And she goes, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Joe, I cannot date this guy. And she's like, well, is he mean to you? <laughs> Joe, does he beat you? <laughs> I am just sure that it's going to happen because 
because he's a nice guy. And, and I just, you know, I know the more you're around somebody, the more you will want to marry them. It's the principle of propinquity. <laughs> oh, hell, Jan, go ahead and date him. <laughs> I'm just going to date him. And she would have to talk me down off the cliff like once a week. Yes, you can date him. You don't have to marry him. Okay, okay, okay. So I would go back and I would date him some more. And we, we dated him. Yeah, she, 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 she was still with me. I had a call a week later and said, can I come over? <laughs> I didn't tell him anything. I go over the house and I'm thinking, you know, one week, nothing, not a peak, nothing. <laughs> so I'm standing on the front door and I say, well, did you get a letter from me? Yes. <laughs> What do you think? Well, it kind of pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. You heard the thing about she had to go shower process. But suffice to say, we got to date more. Yes, it did. And we dated for about a year. And then she comes to me with this question about, like almost asking my permission, which was kind of strange. But she got the chance. We could have called her up because they badly needed someone to call me. She had talked about going to the condo. She felt that very strong in her heart. She, she, it's the place she wanted to go. Um, they normally go for four years. They were short on money. They had to uh, keep around the field and teach these kids for two years. Uh, and so she's asking me, it's like, why are you even asking me? I knew something she wanted to do, but besides, I was jealous. And my mind goes into these other things. You know, I ask her about the situation and everything. Well, they're going to have email. This new invention. On dial up and everything, which meant I could commute. I don't have to send a letter wait two or four weeks and then it's wait, you know, for it to come back. We could actually communicate and I knew where I could get all of it. So we did, we did that. And my mind, too, you've already heard Candace say so, is that I'm thinking when her turn's up, I'm going to go over there, I'm going to see these people she's working with, I'm going to get to know them a little bit, then I'm going to drag her down as a dog to see my friends. So I go to Africa. Uh, I wanted to go in, I was supposed to go into Zaire as an itinerant teacher to travel out to villages and teach the kids in these villages. We they were supposed to go in. Where the translator, the translators are. And um, uh, about a week before I was supposed to go in, a civil war broke out along that coast, of, of, along the side, the side where I was going to be. And they closed Zaire, all the translators were evacuated. And uh, so I was stuck in Nairobi, Kenya. She talked to me. I am not a big city girl, and you're in Nairobi, Kenya. But uh, the kids that had been evacuated needed a teacher, so I taught them. And struck up some friendships, you know, did all the things that you do in the, in the mission field. And, uh, and pretty soon, I'm on email, and we're going back and forth on email now. Back and forth, back and forth. And I read my email one day, and he says, now, you know what? This, this is a, she's already, it's the two years, it's going to be one year, but I was out quicker in Nairobi. So I already know when she's going, and I'm, I'm planning to go over and see her. And I'm, so oh, you oh yeah, story. he was coming to see me. <laughs> he, on email, he says, how about if when I come over there to see you, that we have a traditional African wedding? And I can like buy a couple of goats and like pay your debt. Before I went there, Kenny's um, uncle, Saul, is the first man I met on Heaven's 1975. It'll be who shot me. So we've been friends a long time. I've been there a couple times. I talked to his wife and said, you know, tell your mom and Booyah, and Booyah's their word for grandmother. Um, her real name's Chi 
Chibo means that I'm sorry. And Chibo is not like Chico, it's Chibo, it means gift. Um, and she really is a gift. And as she talked her, I talked her, said, Booyah, I'm coming, I want to stay with you, I'm bringing this lady that I'm serious about. That's really all I said. What she took it as is in the picture, if, if a gal's seeing a boy, she doesn't go talk to her parents about that boy. She takes one of her aunts that she trusts and communicates well with, mm -hmm. and this woman becomes a go-between. She will counsel her about the dating things. If it gets to a point where it's serious, the aunt will talk to the girl's parents. As a go-between, she may do some negotiating with the boy's family, but she took it as, since I was there, not home, and I was obviously at this point in my relationship, she reads me well, she was going to be the only one. Um, and she has, she was uh, wonderful. We, we still want to say one. Okay, say something. <laughs> <laughs> the, the point, which I'm always slow at getting myself, is if you want to make a good impression, take someone to the people who love you, and they will make the impression for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, she made it. <laughs> Well, Amulia lives in this big farmhouse, and there are all these bedrooms. And and so every morning, it's when I first got there, I was making my bed, get ready, and, and Amulia comes in, and she goes, Hello, Jane. Now, my name is Jan, but they can't say that name. <laughs> Hello, Jane. How did you sleep last night? I said, I slept very well. Thank you, Amulia. She said, Oh, Jane. That boy, David, he is a good boy. <laughs> I said, yes, he is. Are you going to marry that boy? I said, I don't know. I haven't told him whether I'm going to marry him or not. I might, but I just haven't made that decision yet. She just, oh, Jane, he is a good boy. I think you should marry that boy. <laughs> and she did that every morning. <laughs> This until after I was married. <laughs> Every morning, oh, Jane, you should marry that boy. He's a good boy. <laughs> so, what happened then was we traveled around Zimbabwe for a while. I decided I needed to go home because I was ending up my stint with Wycliffe and I needed to go home to um, get a job and, you know, settle back in. I had some other things going on in Zimbabwe and one of them was there was a group that was doing a conference in Cape Town. There was a group doing a conference in Cape Town, excuse me, uh, that I was assisting with. So I, I with one of Solomon's brother-in-laws, I kind of most me kind of a couple things, but at this conference in the mornings, the people that are assisting, they you know give your task, what you want to do, and then at the end of it, the guy organized says, "Hey, I'll, I'll give you a secret. Does anyone have anything to say? You know, first part of thing. I'm sorry, raise my hand. He said, "You got 15 seconds." Well, in the meantime, I had emailed him and told him I was married. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> That's what nerds do. <laughs> so when he said 15 seconds, I thought, heavens, I can't talk. So I just stood up and said, she said yes. Oh. So for the rest of the day, I got to explain that to people. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's... so we ended up getting married. When he came back to the States, we got married. And last month, we were married for 22 years. Oh. Oh. for my husband and for the relationships he's introduced me to with his, his family. She said I love her relationships because she had everybody compartmentalized. Here's my job people, here's my work people, here's my church people. And they started getting all mixed up in that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not grateful for you, I'm grateful for all of you.